Welcome to Insights into the Faith with Bishop Mark Seitz of the Diocese of El Paso. Join us as we discuss Bishop Seitz's thoughts and teachings into our faith and the life of our church in El Paso. And now, welcome, Bishop Mark. Good morning. Welcome to Insights into the Faith. I am Fernie Siniceros, Director of Communications for the Diocese of El Paso. And with me today is not Bishop Seitz, but... Um, some might argue even better, right, Father Ben? Father Ben Flores? <laughs> no, definitely not better. <laughs> <laughs> Father Ben Flores, Vicar uh, General and Pastor of Mother Cabrini. Good morning, Father Ben. How are you? Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I'm doing good, Fernando. How are you? I'm good. Gracias a Dios. Gracias uh, a as Dios. always, great to with be our with show, you again. Yes, good. Thank you for joining us, Father Ben. And as always with our show, uh, we like to get started with a prayer. So, Father Ben, would you would you mind starting us with a prayer? Of course, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you call us, Lord, out of our weaknesses, out of our illnesses, out of our tangled webs that we so many a times don't even realize that we weave around ourselves. And you call us into a life of grace and a life of freedom. And we thank you, Lord, for this day that you also called Matthew into a greater life, a greater knowledge of wealth, you also call us. We pray, Lord, that you may continue to guide us with your spirit that frees us, Lord, and constantly calls us into your peace and peace for one another. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of our blessings today and including those things that we do not enjoy, that they too may be graces of yours in this time. We pray for those who suffer, especially the migrant and the indigent. We pray for those who seek you and do not know you, that your spirit may always continue to call them into that loving friendship. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So very quickly, just to uh, let our viewer know, uh, Bishop Mark is actually on a flight back right now. Oh, is he? Okay. Yes, Wasn't sure when he was heading back. Yes, he's actually, if he's not boarded his flight, he's on the flight. He's on his way back oh. from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, where he gave a seminar to the priests of the, the Archdiocese of Milwaukee uh, and, and spoke to them Wonderful. about the border and our border issues. Uh, so we pray for uh, Bishop Mark's return and hopefully later today yeah. we'll see him. Safety in his travels, certainly. Gracias a Dios. Uh, Father Ben, you mentioned St. Matthew uh, today being his feast day. Um, what insight can you tell us about St. Matthew and, and what can we learn from St. Matthew and St. Matthew's call uh, to, to be a disciple of Christ? Well, you know, one of the things that I kind of uh, um, gleaned from the reading, the gospel reading uh, today was... Um, how Jesus, you know, responds to the Pharisees that are taken aback because Jesus is sitting with tax collectors and, and sinners at the table. And the table is a very intimate place to share with anybody. And so that sign of that intimacy of Jesus being such a holy, reverent man um, with great power and authority, as many have seen already through his actions, just throws them off completely. But he, he speaks of grace when he says, you know, it's the, the, the doctor has come for the sick. Um, and, and so, you know, yeah, when you think of uh, first responders, they're the ones going into the fire. When you think of doctors, they're the ones going in the room with, with COVID patients. When, when you think of anyone who is out there for our, um, you know, uh, interests, they're going to go in where the fire is at, where you know, where we need help. And, um, and Jesus is pointing that out. But the other thing too, is that, you know, I don't know if uh, Matthew may have been uh, maybe a little bit, um, I don't know, uh, taken aback by the fact that he may have thought sick. I'm not sick. <laughs> I didn't call a doctor, you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm good, man. I, I, I got <laughs> Yeah, I got my future planned out right here in front of me. I have my business worked out, my workers. And, and I think that's the other part, right? That we don't think we're sick because everything's in place, right? Our, our, our finances are good and 
you know, and, uh, and our business is doing good. And uh, so our kids are doing good. And so we, we don't see uh, the, the, uh, the illness of the spirit and the soul. Um, that's not one of the things that come to mind. So that may have been an eye opener for Matthew, I think, to, to hear Jesus say, you know, it's, it's the doctor, uh, the, the sick who need the doctor, you know? Mm-hmm. So I kind of, um, it stuck with me. I wonder what Matthew, <laughs> what his impressions were when, you know, when he responded that way, you know, if we could go back and, and ask him about that. <laughs> it, it, isn't it always striking that whenever we talk about like the, the, the apostles and how the apostles were called to service with Jesus, how they came from very human experiences that we can very much relate to today. Um oh, no. How, how how do you view that as a uh how how can I put it? How do you view that as a way for us to find uh ourselves in the disciples, uh, our lives and 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 much like you said right now with St. Matthew, uh how do we take that and put it into practice into our faith? Yeah. I guess, you know, and that that's the 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 beauty of the word that we see. Jesus very much reaching out to the ordinary folks so that us ordinary folk can see ourselves in that spot as well and say, you know, um, and even sometimes as we would categorize a Paul or, or, or Judas, even somebody who is just so, you know, on the opposite end of the <laughs> spectrum, say, I'm not that kind of a, of a bad person, yeah. but to say, even there, you know, kind of like the seed that, that the parable of the seed that falls on, on, on rocky ground, you know, even there, there's, there's some life that comes out of there, you know, but I mean, yeah, it takes a little cooperation to get rid of the rock so it can grow deeper into, into soil. But, um, but so, so it doesn't begin with us. I think it begins with, with just the grace of God calling us into his grace and, and, and allowing us to see ourselves to say ordinary folk people who think they have it all together and think that what this life tells you to have together is 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 where you're going to be okay um you know gives me a little a little inkling in there to say okay now let's explore that a little bit more where do i see myself how do i connect with this reality when i think uh you know, I have to get my act together in this way, but, but it's only material things. And I'm not thinking about the spiritual or I concern myself. I let myself go into, you know, worrying about the material and forgetting about the spiritual, how subtle that is. And uh, how I'm constantly being called to say, no, follow me, you know, my, my, my spiritual guide and teacher and master, but also a true word of flesh and bone, you know? So, um so it's 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 just incredible you know the more we sit with the word the more it, it speaks to us you know and guides us you know, so grateful to god excellent father ben i i'm very uh i always feel whenever i hear these stories i always feel a sense of renewal for myself mm-hmm. um especially exactly. you know uh, those of us that work in the church it, it can get very familiar <laughs> and and maybe that same fire you had at the beginning you didn't have you don't have right now and then when you hear a story like matthew's or for me whenever i hear uh, peter or anything really to do with peter and peter's story um it always lights a fire under me to say hey you're there's there's a reason you're here and you know you are still contributing to 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 uh god's glory exactly uh, exactly exactly as awkward as it may seem that we don't have anything to contribute or why what would i be doing in church or serving or what have you um god always uses our gifts and talents for the greater glory and beyond the talents that we would be able to use them for so yeah almost like uh like to an extent of wow i didn't know i didn't know that's something that i could do or i didn't know and and isn't that very telling to even today with matthew and the tax collector like yeah. who am i a tax collector to follow you and yet here here he is there is an invitation yeah and and to bring so much joy out of out of the work that he does more than just for himself. It kind of reminds me of the story of Zacchaeus who also wanted to see Jesus. And he was a, you know, another infamous tax collector, but, but he turns around when he's called by Jesus to say, 
I will repay anyone that I've cheated four times over, you know? So it's like your gifts can bring you joy, but if we give them over to, to Jesus, he will show us what more he could also do, how much more joy, you know, the gifts that we, you know, whether we're a catechist, whether, you know, in church serving in any kind of ministry, we don't realize it's like, wow, you know, I really enjoy this. You know, I really mm -hmm. love serving at the altar. I really enjoy the class of the students, or I really, you know, and never knew they had it, but never really even imagined how much joy they would get out of it. So right. that's the other gift, I think. I, I recently, I, I'll tell a story very quickly. I recently uh, received a phone call from a lady that was asking uh, uh, here at the office that was asking for uh, if, if she could have her address changed uh, for the newspaper. And I said, oh, yeah, this is what you do. And I kind of walked her through it. And, and she says, oh, what, what, if you don't mind my asking, what, what's, your, what's your name? And I think I told her at the top, but she may not have heard it. So, so, you know, my name is Ronnie Sandy Setos. I work, I, I'm the director of communication. She says, oh, I love your column. It's great. How fantastic. I'm so glad I got to talk to you. And all of a sudden I was just kind of surprised, like, oh, what you, you read the column? Like, I, I, it's so weird that it's something that, you know, I just kind of do to put out the paper and really once I'm done putting it out, I don't think about it. That's it. Yeah. It's out there in the world. And yeah, you don't yeah. think, and I'm sure this happens to you all the time uh, mm -hmm. with maybe a homily or something you said and, and pues te it goes, you know, you forget and then it comes back mm -hmm. and somebody tells you, Oh, I got a lot of something, whatever. Yeah. I, I think this woman yeah. was just saying, I enjoy your column. And, and I was, I was even, I, I said, oh, wow, you read it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I didn't think anyone read that. <laughs> well, that's one more reader than your mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, uh, it's like, oh, my, my, my mom isn't the only one. Fantastic. <laughs> and, and it does, it does give you a sense of only the Lord only can do that. I, I'm just an instrument. I, I'm sure. not, I'm not special in any way. The Lord is using me here. I, you know, yeah, exactly. there's no way I could have done this on my Exactly. And that's why we continue to preach because we never know how our words may impact somebody who really needed to hear that or to read it or to see it in our example. And we continue because, you know, it's, it's the Lord's work and he knows why. And that's all we can do. It's just be of service. Gracias. Oh, we'll get in well, the way. <laughs> so so to to ask saint matthew for prayers today saint matthew pray for us amen uh, amen um father ben uh what are the other things that we have going on uh this week uh tomorrow actually is the the foundation dinner um mm, uh the, the foundation, foundation yeah the annual foundation dinner uh yeah. they're finally back after two almost three years of not having it um, they're finally back and able to do this dinner. Can you talk to us a little bit about, I, I think a lot of people don't understand what it is and who it, who it benefits and why, like, it, it's all very confusing. Can you kind yeah. of talk to us a little bit about what, what it is that the foundation is and does and, and why it's so important for us to support them? So, so different ways that we can support the church, um, the foundation office helps us, you know, um, and in simple just reminders of stewardship, you know, what our stewardship is and that all of us have a role. <clears throat> all of us have gifts and um, all of us have been given so much by God. And so that, you know, um, I guess premise there continues to grow. Um, and then and then from there, we also have, you know, the opportunity to help uh, diocesan ministry offices like yours, the Office of Communication, to, to support those offices that do the work in ministry that we don't do or cannot at the parish because uh, we're limited in our resources. But you guys, the experts in communication and what have you, you're able to do and speak on behalf of the whole diocese, on behalf of Bishop. Uh, Mark, on behalf of, of the rest of the clergy, what have you, uh, you're a means of, of reaching out to beyond just our parishioners to, to, you know, the whole diocese and the whole nation and so on and so forth. So, so the progress office, part of also the, uh, the foundation office, 
um, or I should say the Catholic uh, Ministry Appeal, also is, is one that is, forms part of that foundation office. And then we have uh, endowments and we have so many other ways that people may be able to, and those that have more means to be able to support the church and never thought about it, you know, uh, uh, like selling their car or their, their property or their house or, or, or leaving a last will testament to gift and endowment for the church, for vocations, for, you know, the greater picture. And, uh, and so the foundation office is there to help, um, not just you know, necessarily just for the church, but to help you understand you have all these means, what, uh, you know, and you have all these ways that you can use it. What is, what is it that you want to do? So um, tomorrow's dinner, the foundation dinner is um, actually setting aside a little bit also for the future. Uh, if we don't uh, save right now in endowments for the future, then we're just, uh, you know, uh, basically living paycheck to paycheck, as you would say, you know, uh, once we run out of that, then th there's nothing else. So uh, the foundation allows us to have eyes for the long run. You know, what do we want to do in the long run? How can we continue to support these ministries? How can we continue to support our parishes? Um, because it comes back to the people. It comes back to the people. You know, a lot of people say, no, I don't want to give to the to the diocese. It's like, well, we are the diocese. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, to say something like that is to shoot yourself on the foot. It's like you don't want to nurture your church for the future of the church or vocations or the office of communication or tribunal office. It's like, you know, where would we be without you all in ministry out there? You know, and so it's um I, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of people still don't understand that we are one church and mm -hmm. that we work in different capacities. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I go back to catechism and, and I think of, you know, the work that we do here at home at the parish is to complement what parents do at home, you know, to raise their children in the faith by practicing the faith at home. We try to give them an understanding of that here at the parish, but they're not our kids. You know, we have them only for an hour, an hour and a half, and but they spend most of the time at home. So we we support each other. We're the same goal. It's about them, you know, uh, only we do it differently. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a, a little kitchen here in the living room like they would have maybe in, in their house. But, but, but we have a, a little space that we call a classroom where we would like to share the faith with, with the children. So it is with the foundation. They're, they're supporting the diocese in different means, but it's all for the same purpose, you know, to continue to preach the gospel, to continue to remind us we have so much to contribute, just like we were talking about right now about St. Matthew, you know, um, and to continue to remind us that there are other people with great needs too, you know, as, as little as we have, what little we have, when we break it and share, God multiplies it. So we reach out to you know, migrants and the indigent, and we help out and we support, you know, couples who are struggling in, in, in their marriages or financially or what have you, um, help out seminarians because, you know, they don't have the means for their own studies and formation. So, so again, it, it comes back to us. We are investing, you know, in the good of the church locally, but we also, you know, to, to some extent, we also give a portion beyond ourselves. Again, we don't, uh, it would be a contradiction just to think of ourselves as the only ones in need and not think of our neighbor too. Right. Um, so, so we take up second collections for the church in Africa or the university, a, a Catholic university in America or, or for the needs of the Pope and his intentions and, and um, you know, his missionary work. And so we, we extend ourselves in so many ways, but it goes to show how much we can do. <laughs> right. And Again, it goes back the, to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And those are the ones that are contributing. Just imagine, which is a tiny, tiny little portion of the Catholic faith, right? Right. Just imagine if there was double that amount, double that amount. If, if in the parish you have 20% of parishioners contributing to the uh, Catholic Ministry Appeal, if we were to double that, imagine how much more we could do. Everybody, if every parish was to double right. that. Wow, 
wow, wow, wow. That that would be extraordinary, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and so I just want to encourage you all to continue um, trusting in in the stewardship that God has given to all of us, uh, and to be generous, you know, and He will multiply it. So thank you all for your contributions as well, and for your work, Fernie. Uh, yes, there absolutely. The diocesan we, office. We we benefit so much. Uh, in our diocesan office from the contributions uh, of our community uh, to bring you this show, to bring you uh, our your televised masses, uh, um, for those that, that are infirmed at home, that, that cannot go out um, for whatever reason, uh, you know, it, it, the, the Rio Grande Catholic, and that, that's just my office alone, you know, uh, Tepeyac and everything that they do, um, the office of uh, permanent deacons, uh, the tribunal, uh, the list, I mean, we can go on and on, uh, the Tigua uh, ministry uh, and all the work that, that Mike does for those people. Um, it, it just, you know, it, it's so many to list. I, I can't think of them all right now. Uh, those are just the ones that are coming to the top of my head, but uh, I'm, I'm so forever grateful to uh, Linda Caro and her team uh, at the foundation. So uh, as yeah. a way to support them, uh, mm -hmm. we, we will be going to the foundation dinner tomorrow. Definitely. Yeah, tomorrow's dinner uh, begins, well, I think it begins, what, at five o'clock with, with just people who want to get there early. There's yes, correct. there's some door pri or um, some auction items. Yes. Um, a delicious dinner will be served. Um, uh, we will be uh, remembering and honoring uh, Father Rick Maddy uh, mm -hmm. of Lake Memory to, um, and a wonderful priest, uh, rector of the cathedral here of the Diocese of El Paso. And I believe he was also a vicar general or chancellor. Yes, he was. I don't know. Yeah. Vicar yes. general. And um, um, so, yeah, if you're interested in joining us, Bishop will certainly be there. And uh, if you're interested in joining us, just call the pastoral center and ask for the office of the foundation for tickets. Um, and I think it's, uh, what's the number for any 872-8400. So call the, the chancery office and they can, they can pass you through to, uh, to the foundation office and somebody can help you there with, uh, the tickets. Correct. So tomorrow morning, just as a quick announcement, tomorrow morning, there will be a mass at St. Raphael's, uh, parish, uh, with, uh, Sarah Hart, who is coming down for the foundation dinner mm -hmm. as well. Uh, those of you might know Sarah Hart. Uh, does a lot of uh, uh, Christian music, but also liturgical music as well. Uh, she will be uh, the music ministry tomorrow for the special mass with Bishop Seitz. Bishop Seitz will be yeah. will be here tomorrow for that, and we will be uh, live streaming a uh, simulcasting on our Dios and Facebook. So uh, you can check it out here where you're watching this podcast. You can also watch uh, the the mass tomorrow with Sarah Hart. The mass is open to the public. People the mass is open to, to the public. Yes, Wonderful. it's first come first serve. Wonderful. First come, first serve. Get there early then. What Get time is the early. mass at? Eight o'clock? I believe it's at 8.30. 8.30. Okay. I believe it's at 8.30. Right. And uh, we will put out an announcement later on today in case Father Ben and I are wrong. <laughs> but there will be an <laughs> announcement uh, on our DOS and Facebook. So keep an eye on that. Awesome. Uh, Father Ben, just very quickly, you know, I, we run out of time so fast that, we, you know, we, wow. we think we're not going to make half an hour. And here we are at half an hour. But... Uh, <laughs> I usually bug Father. Uh, I usually uh, bug Bishop Mark uh, for just a smidgen, uh, just a taste uh, of what we might hear this weekend. And uh, not to give away the store, though. I mean, because people still got to go to mass and see, people still got to go to church. But uh, tell us a little bit about the gospel of the week, Father Ben. Yeah. So we're looking, and we're in the gospel of Luke, and today we have a. Another beautiful uh, parable, right? And we've been in the parables with Jesus, which I just love uh, because like everything else speaks to us, um, to our time, day and age. And uh, we're at the parable of the, the, the rich man uh, who dressed luxuriously and, um, and the other man who, who didn't and uh, for all purposes appeared to be very poor. Again, um, the man being Lazarus, right? Famous Lazarus, who was at his door um, uh, scraping for something to eat, right? Uh, something for the body, uh, not realizing that that was an opportunity for the rich man to, to nurture his soul. So the exchange there of, of one uh, for uh, 
uh, an act of mercy, an act of kindness and compassion um, for, for the other who is in great need for, for food. Um, and, um, and, and just, you know, just be able to, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a long parable, but it's a beautiful story again, again, calling us to, uh, to share uh, of our stewardship. But more importantly, I think also there's, there's another point to it where um, even um, Lazarus um, enjoying of heaven and, um, and the rich man calling on Father Abraham to, to, to you know, command of Lazarus to do something for his suffering. And he didn't realize that all this time Lazarus was there doing something for his suffering. You know, he now he's suffering eternally, uh, you know, this separation from God, from heaven. Um, and, um, and, and just that, you know, insight into there, how much do, do those in need offer us? You know, it may be an inconvenience, you know, to, to respond to a sick call. It may be an inconvenience to somebody comes into to the front office and we're in the middle of the bulletin or our thoughts yeah. or what have you. And, mm -hmm. and we don't realize what God has ready for us, you know, and how much uh, God is offering us at that moment. Those little interruptions that uh, I have learned to, to appreciate a little bit more and not to be bothered by so much. Uh, mm -hmm. To look at the, how my life is being nourished, or it could be, you know, if I if I open my myself and, and give myself to that opportunity, or not, you know, right. Um, and maybe they do need something from us, right? Mm -hmm. and, and something only we can give them that they don't have. But they also bring and, and offer us something that maybe they don't realize that they are even bringing or offering us. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is an exchange. It's never. It's never about, you know, uh, everyone is asking of me, todo yo, todo yo. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. Sometimes we feel that way, like uh, this, father, this, father, that, father, this, father. But we don't realize, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you look back and, and think of the story of Lazarus and realize, man, these people fed me in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there was an exchange, in other words. It, it isn't just a depletion of your time or your gifts or your treasure it's it's also uh, a strengthening and nourishment that we will see more so in, in in the life to come you know and hopefully we will be with them and i think that that's something that um you know i having worked in this job um and and of course having oh. been through through some some seminary formation uh i i've managed to make friends of a lot of uh, your brothers, you, yourself and your brother priests. And the one thing that I am always st struck by is how touched they are by their communities. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it may feel like you may be bothering them, but in reality, you're really not, you're you're exchanging, like you said. And, and a lot of people don't realize that just as much as they receive something from you, Father Ben, you receive something from them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, 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 I mean, just to see them, right? I mean, we don't think about, you know, necessarily a particular person, but then we see them and we say, hey, it's been a while. How are mm -hmm. you? And, and it's a genuine, I hadn't seen you in a while, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's good to know that they're doing well. And it's good to know that they've been busy or, you know, or, or even if they were sick, I didn't know that, but I will certainly be praying for your continued right. health. Um, that touching base, you know, that's what nurtures the faith, the community, you know, just to share a little hello is part of the Eucharistic mystery, you know, that we continue to feed each other, you know, um, so give and take. Right. You know, even, it, even, when, even when we're bugging you about uh, how good the Dallas Cowboys are going to beat up on the New York Giants this week. Yeah, right? even sens senseless things like that, that make <laughs> no sense whatsoever. <laughs> For those of you who I mean, if it helps you, Fernie, if it helps you, then you know what? I'm with you, man. I'm with you. For but those we'll for, we'll for those viewers thing. that that don't know, Father Ben is is a New York Giants fan, and I am a humble Dallas Cowboys fan. So we every year we go we go through this. <laughs> I couldn't help it, Father Ben. Uh, <laughs> Father, 
thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thanks, and, Fernando. And, and, Appreciate and it. In Bishop's absence, as always, we're praying for Bishop Mark and his ministry. But also, yes. just know that uh, Bishop Mark prays prays for you and your ministry and and the ministry of your brothers. Uh, I know you. that for a fact, and he prays for everyone of, of those members in our community, those members in our diocesan uh, church. Um, but Father Ben, uh, as always, we close with a blessing. So if you could, Father Ben, Amen. could you give us a, a, a small blessing? Sure. And on this beautiful feast of St. Matthew, may we always hear that calling to greater treasures in heaven. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for everyone you for that joined us. Yes, uh, and of course, right. to Father Ben. Pleasure. And we will see you all next week. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Insights into the Faith is a production of the Office of Communications of the Catholic Diocese of El Paso. Our executive producer is the Most Reverend Bishop Mark J. Seitz, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of El Paso. This podcast was produced and directed by Fernie Senecitos, Director of Communications for the Diocese of El Paso. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. You can ask Bishop Seitz a question for this show by emailing communications at elpasodiocese.org. That's communications at elpasodiocese.org. You can also follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with the handle at El Paso Diocese. May God bless you all, and we'll see you again next week.